Next, we look at software evolution, which explains why software gets so big. It also explains the costs related to developing large software and partially explains the varying levels of quality we can see in the source code. Let's start out by some terminology. Software evolution is the process of developing the initial version of software and the further development of that initial version reflect the growing and changing needs of various stakeholders such as users, customers, company shareholders, programmers and product managers. Software maintenance is an often used synonym for software evolution. Different types of software maintenance tasks have been identified, such as corrective, which means fixing bugs, adaptive, which means modifying the software so that it can live and operate in the new environment, and perfective, which means adding new features and making performance improvements, for example. The word software maintenance is poor since software is not rugged in use like physical products which can wear out to the wear and tear of the from the constraints of the physical world. Therefore, the word software evolution is preferred. You should understand, however, that when talking about software evolution and software maintenance, people often are talking about the very same thing. Software evolution or software maintenance really is a continuum. We can see this figure that on the left we have an empty editor with no source code in it. We may refer this situation to with the following phrases. In the beginning there was nothing. Clean slate. Empty canvas. Green field. As soon as some code is written, constraints of past code start to appear. Also, once you have started writing the code, you have already made choices, such as the choice of programming language, for example. You might have also chosen the database you are using or the operating system you are developing the particular software for. All of the choices you make become constraints and may come back to haunt you later. Okay, time moves on, you make more code, you make more constraints. And finally, you might end up in a situation where a programmer says, what a mess, whoever programmed this should be... And then some passwords following that. The figure on the right shows a printed method from the Java program. It is a single method with 500 lines of code. I ran into this code while doing some software maintenance several years ago. I certainly was not happy to find out about this code and it was also later discovered that refactoring this method, this 500 line method to smaller pieces was impossible. Almost all large and successful software systems and products undergo continuous software evolution. This has been known for a quite a while. Already in 1975, Brooks wrote that the product over which one has labored so long appears to be obsolete upon or before completion. Already colleagues and competitors are in a hot pursuit of new and better ideas. As soon as one freezes a software design, it becomes obsolete. Some laws for software evolution have also been proposed, known as the Lehman's laws. The first two are the most significant. Law 1 says, change is inevitable. Software which is used in a real-world environment must change or become less and less useful in that environment. This does not hold for all software, however. For example, algorithms and protocols may remain unchanged for decades. 
yet for software systems that are used by humans or organizations need to undergo continuous change as the world around the software is continuously changing and new requirements are coming in. Law 2 of Software Evolution says that as program changes, its structure becomes more complex unless active efforts are made to avoid this phenomenon. These active efforts may be called with the names such as refactoring or re-engineering. The consequence of these two laws, a change is inevitable and that each change increases complexity, is that even if you would have perfect design in your software, it would soon be outdated. 